Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash building challenge. In light of the 2.2 sneak peek dropping a few days ago, which I'll put my reaction to midway this video as an intermission, I decided to make a full length level in 2.2 hours, which is 2 hours and 12 minutes. I don't really know how this is going to go. I've got three ideas in my head, probably going to wing the fourth. I must say, this isn't going to be a style or concept that I haven't done before on the channel, but I hope the video is still entertaining. You can see the level name right here is a flip from dot dot dot, which is a level that I made a few years ago that took two hours and seven minutes to make, which is a very similar time limit. It's bad. And it's using a lap song, which I'll edit in right now, and I'll link the artist in the description. Let me show you the timer I have. As soon as I hit this button, you see underneath the zoom out button and the editor, there is a pretty small but effectively placed timer. I did this in my one hour building challenge. I think I'm ready to go. I've got Atoms of Embers by Laps locked and loaded, the 223 start off set. All right, without further ado, Let's go. I'm not going to rush this or put any sort of pressure on myself to build quickly because I'm pretty confident with the ideas that I have. When I set up my alpha triggers, I'm going to explain what my plans are. Basically, to do this as effectively as possible, I'm probably going to try and make very widespread backgrounds with transparent objects. My immediate plan is to make a black screen that covers everything on color channel 1. I've started using a new custom object which shows me the boundaries of a uh, moving background. If I position that right there, that's in the middle of those and I can change this to group 3. This is a regular screen and then the blocks on the side are like extra. So moving group 3 and then it's also going to have a unique group 4 which is going to fade off right Right about here. Come to think of it, I'm probably going to use the second line type and I'm going to use white because that's going to match some of the outlines that I'm going to be using for the blocks. Probably going to be using the box meta to start off with. A rectangular object, a 3x3 three three object and then a 2x2. Two two. Let me put a ship portal under the level to show the boundaries. So we're going to move these towards the player but first we're putting lines here. There's going to be three copies in each one, each with different groups. So let me select the whole thing, give that its moving group 5 which is going to be the same for all 3x3s. Three and then there's going to be a unique group for this line. Copy paste another unique group. Copy paste another unique group. About 20 blocks before, these are going to move down. Just 15 or so. Easy and out. 3 seconds so the movement doesn't complete before it's off screen. Could maybe increase the move times on these. I need to get this perfect. And when I do, I can just build help of this around the level. So there we go. That's more like it. We're adding black glow, which is going to differentiate it from the background. Then I'm also going to put some squares on the inside, which are on color channel 2, which is yet to be colored. I'm just going to put this as a template right now. All right, we can link this all together. We need to copy paste it and remember that we need to press build helper every time. Make sure this is all on a moving group 5, which will ever so slightly move towards the player over like 15 seconds, I guess. And it can move like minus 5. I don't know. <laughs> I'm having to guess values because I don't really know how it's going to work myself. All right, now moving on to this object, we need to get rid of 5 and give it a new moving group, 24. The numbers are going to be a bit messy, but it's probably just going to move minus 100. So not as fast as the other layer. Okay, now I have a slight problem. Since these objects are moving closer and the triggers aren't, they're kind of out of sync now. Probably just going to have to move these by eye without much judgment. This is for the 2x2 two two object, which is going to move up 12. I don't know, it's the first number I thought of. And then minus 300, 400? Yeah, sure, whatever. Also, I completely forgot to make the object line white. <laughs> We're going to pulse the outline and the line together. I'm probably going to make that just copy the object color. We're probably going to change the object color with color triggers. It's just a little bit easier to control in this scenario. Instead of fading to black on the kick, the last one makes it fade back to white and that's going to allow me to loop it again. I can probably copy paste most of this and just build helper it once again and just rejig the positions. I guess I just got to make sure that these movements happen again right at this portal over here. With blending turned on, we're just going to change the hue of this color around the color wheel. We can also mess with the opacity a little bit up and down. You see that the color triggers are kind of like staggered. So there's a lot at one time and then there's a gap. That's because this song has a lot of notes at some points, but then not a lot of notes at other points, you know? Okay, as we near the Q portal, we're going to fade in the black screen to 80% opacity. And then right as you go through on like a 0.5 maybe, so it's still happening as you go through the portal, it's going to zero again. All right, it's time to make a rotating line. I'm probably going to stack this in like a three way stripe like that. There's going to be an invisible center, which is going to be group 85, group one for the invis. We'll put that on editor layer six. And then the rotating group is going to be 
86. So we're going to have this on B4 and 9. Okay. So we have a 30 block long strip like that that we're going to start rotating around the center. So this now needs to be placed on our moving group, which is 3. We can't forget the center ID in this as well. I'm not going to be able to place this at the side of the screen without these objects getting crushed at the bottom, as you can see. So this is where I want it. How much do I need to move it down from up? You know, we shall move this 240 downwards on a new group 87, right at the very beginning of the level. I need to move this to the left. One, two, three, four times. Okay, 22 blocks to the left. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's meeting up in the middle. 86, around 85. Then 88 can have minus one, which is the new secondary side that we added over here. And these should rotate together. Yeah, there's two 88s. That's the problem. Okay, so select this object and give it a new center. 88 rotates around 89. Gotcha. The layering's important. Okay, so I remember the right side being on B4 and 9. We can have this on B4 and 7. Okay, now at the top of the screen, I'm going to be adding some black beams that go in between these two layers. So it's going to cover up one side of the rotation. We can extend that across the screen now. I'll copy paste this, move it five blocks upwards and just repeat that a little bit. Oh yeah, it covers up the left. Perfect. Okay, then on the top Z order, above the whole background on a new group 93 we can make a smaller beam and do the same thing except move it slower 225 so it's half the speed i think that's respectable that's kind of trippy actually i like it and then probably finishing touches for the ship section we're going to put some black glow to differentiate the ground from the background and make it look a bit more shaded overall select everything don't fade don't enter turn off glow and we can turn off the background effect and this should be nice and playable right off the bat Yes, okay. I am pretty happy with this. Oh god. It's a little bit difficult to play because of how fast some stuff moves. You know, I think it's interesting. We've got some moving blocks, which I barely ever use. We've got a pretty dynamic background that has a couple of layers to it. Well, here we are. We're at the 2.2 sneak peek. The chat's going insane. There's 70, 79k people are just updated. Premieres in 60 seconds. We all know that's like three minutes because of the goddamn intro. The intro is longer than what the sneak peek is going to be. It's 1 minute and 44 seconds, apparently, according to Google search results. In my mind, I've gone through countless different scenarios, like the dramatic extreme demon intro with many doubted. People said it would never be done, and then like a 10 second preview at the end. We've got to put the monkey in the chat for good measure. 135k watching this, let's have a look. Oh, it's not a troll. Oh man. Oh dude, this is going to be a whole puzzle. <laughs> okay, it looks like he's taken influence from some other levels right there. Oh, that's sick. Where did that vocal come from? Oh, the rotating screen as well. Damn. It's like many things that people... Oh my god. That's such a clever way to transition. Please show another thing. Oh, it's like a skit! Oh my god. That's blew my expectations for sure. Oh, damn. It's gonna be a platformer mode thing. Whoa. Can you really scroll through levels like that? Free flight cam? Oh my god. Dude, it's the platformer mode. Oh, you can't just die there. Come on. There's a lot of blocks here that have like multiple different shades to them. And I can't really tell how it's going to work with like a base and detail in the editor. It looks like it has a lot of oomph to it, you know, when you put the input in. Because he's probably clicked it around about there. And it swings so far downwards. And it looks like it swings further up the longer you go. This is crazy. If this all works the way I think it works. Incredible sneak peek, Rob Tiles. Have a look at what people are saying. My profile picture is still blacked out. Got fired from Duncan from watching the preview during my shift. Secret song by MDK. So there's going to be more than one. Right as this fades off, we can toggle off pretty much everything. We're going to stop group three. And we're going to toggle group three. And we're going to have a new moving group. This is just a habit I do in all of my levels. I start a new moving group for every part. Just remaining silent while I'm make gameplay because I need to focus a lot. I spent like 45 minutes on the first background, I realized. Or the first part, I mean. <laughs> it feels like I spent all that time on the background. I kind of want to use the ground as a boundary here. I just wanted to have some gameplay that brings the player pretty close to the ground, as you can see. So there's no time to like sit back and structure or anything. I just need to get going immediately. I know I said I was planning on having a fourth part, but I really don't know if that's going to be happening. So I want to have some low opacity objects right here. So I'm lining all of the bottom objects with this 
right now. On Editor Layer 10, I'm just going to extend these down to the ground to save like 320 objects for doing that. Okay. And then we can go back to this layer and start making the top object as well. Okay. We've selected all of these objects. We're going to copy paste, go to Editor Layer 11. We're going to use the mini blocks on this tab right here to kind of wedge them out of place. We'll give that a group 94 and then we'll just move this around with a couple of shift steps. Keep giving it new groups every time. Starting on group 94 and ending at group 98, we're going to make a toggle loop and we're just going to mess with sequencing and stuff. We'll just put this wherever we can get it and just deal with it, I think. Oh, I could have saved time by doing it on the chains as well or some sort of decoration. Okay, we'll just remake that. For the chains, I might scale up some of them. Hey, it looks kind of ghostly like that. Okay, so the way I'm changing the opacity, since it's done through the color channel, I'm having to use a color trigger with different opacities on it. Then similarly to the beginning, there's going to be short fade time color changes to color channel 4. If we ever so slightly work our way into color and then back down, I have to scale these up at times just to make it feel a bit different. This is keeping in the grayscale while having other colors in the mix as well. So in this transition, I have now added an object trigger which changes the object line to black blending. You can see how much cooler this now looks. I just need to go into non-preview mode, make a black pulsing triangle, then on the layer below, put a white pulsing triangle. That's going to be our spike design. Uh, yeah, we'll go with color four again. We'll do some group work as well. Only three of them, 94, 96, 98. You see that effect. So the reason that this is so rugged is because it allows me to not be too clean in the way I'm arranging stuff. I can kind of just do what I like with this and it's just going to look fine. Even if stuff isn't perfectly aligned. <laughs> I love those spikes so much. Okay. Now, I don't really use play colors too often. So what I'm doing is on the beat of the song, I'm changing all of color 4 to play color 1 or 2. I think this is pretty effective because it happens when it's at its full opacity and there's no other color triggers that are really changing the color or getting in the way of that. All three gradient objects are going to be on T2. These two objects are on half opacity. The front is on full. They all need a moving group 99. Don't fade, don't enter. Massive squares to accompany them. We're going to stack them on top of each other. Okay, we'll just make it completely cover and follow the X axis forever. Okay, copy some bricks that can go down the sides of these objects to fill the space a little bit more. I've been super lazy right here and put a saw in between a bunch of glow that's on the groups that we've been using. You can see that happening. Color channel 4 can go to black right here just on zero move time. The pulse is still happening that's why it takes a little while but I think it looks cool that it kind of switches from the blending version right down to nothing. Gonna do some similar layering stuff to the beginning in the final UFO. I'll try and use the same layers if I remember. So we've got a B4 and 7 circle here. Then there's going to be a smaller one on top, which is going to be B4 and 9. Now we have to box meta. This is our only hope of getting this done because, as you can see by the timer, we only have half an hour left. Okay, so the outer layer of these pulsing objects is going to be set to 101. Then the inner layer is going to be set to 102. And this can get toggled off and on in patterns like this. I'm going to copy around this original box. Probably going to change these toggle triggers to alpha triggers because it makes more sense. For every snare in this part, I'm going to line up the second set of alpha triggers with it. So you see how it fades and then comes back on. Testing a quick change. The circles and the blocks and stuff in this UFO are the only things that are transitioning on and off the screen now. I don't know. I think it makes a nice change. I'm copying the color triggers from earlier in the first ship to be reused in this UFO. The last one is going to fade for about three seconds to black so the invisible objects disappear. Also, I want to reuse the play color pulses that I did earlier except this time it's going to be on the white objects as they become opaque right here. So now I'm going to copy the value of the second square, the one that's laid beneath, and just have a couple that just sit on the floor. I said box meta, but I ended up not making a design at all and just resorting to the most basic things. Before I get carried away, I'm probably going to change the hue of these squares, which is going to be interesting because they pulse to player colors. So it's going to be like hue 180 of the player colors. It's something I did in the level swap with Alkali, if you want to check that out for more details on it. Hue plus 180, there we go. Okay, now I should probably get the masking done before I actually run out of time. I've got like 10 minutes left but I am just going to copy what we did earlier. <laughs> just got to remember, don't give these group three because that's an old moving group that got toggled. 103 is the new one. And then we shall build helper, I think. Yeah, let's start the trigger early and then have an ease out. So it rushes onto the screen. Hey, look at that now. It's all shady. Yeah, this is cool. If I had a few more details, this should be possible in my opinion. Now, one of the last things I'm going to do before I get to polishing, because as you can see, I've barely got any time left, 
is I'm just going to add a bunch of glow. Now, this is blending glow, so it won't show up on top of white, but when these objects are covered up, it will show up. I'm pretty happy with what we've got after this time limit. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've done better in less time before. It's a bit different when you're recording a video. This looks good, I think. I really like the UFO at the end. And to end the level, I'm probably just going to change the background to white, which is absurd because... As you can see, I haven't changed the background at all. For that, I can probably just select the whole thing and put it on group 106 and do the classic Woolsey ending, which is just to toggle it all off. Make sure that trigger is not on group 106, otherwise it won't happen. I've got random time left, so I'm just going to put random chains at the bottom that are going to get covered up by the mask. It's on the seven layer, which is the bottom of the circles to put it into context. Boom! There it goes. I enjoyed that a lot. It was kind of stressful towards the end, I'm not gonna lie, but that was fun. I am super happy with this, honestly. I didn't think it would turn out this well polished. <laughs> Some of my levels aren't actually this polished, and this is only two hours worth of work. I mean, I have a lot of levels on my main account that are actually, like, made in three hours or so, but... Man, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I mean, the middle part's kind of a miss, but I didn't really have many ideas. And I did kind of reuse the mask in the ending, which is both unfortunate and genius at the same time, because it gave me a lot of time. I think it's pretty decent. If I didn't tell you that the mask was the same in the first and the last part, I don't think you would know. Dedicated to Rob Top for getting the 2.2 sneak peek out. Hopefully you enjoyed my reaction. I kind of just slapped it into the middle. I know I'm on my old, but it's going on my main. I don't care. Thank you for watching this Geometry Dash video. Video? I don't know why I said it like that. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe, because this was kind of a nightmare to record. Man, I was just non-stop building for two hours. I got really, really tired in the middle, as you can tell by the middle part. But yeah, have a good day.